you can view transformations from three different angles. The pre-image, which is an equation that you want to transform, such as y equals to x squared or y equals to square root x. You then have the transformations, usually in the sequence of DRT, also known as dilations, reflections, and translations. When you feed the pre-image through these transformations, you will get a resultant equation known as the image equation, such as y equals to 2 times x minus 3 squared plus 1, or y equals to 2 times the square root of x minus 3 plus 1. Today on MathBase, we will look at two examples where you're given the pre-image and a sequence of transformations and asked to find the image equation. In our first question, we're given a very basic pre-image equation, y equals to x squared, and we're asked to transform this using the following sequence. The first step is to write out a coordinate which represents our pre-image equation, and the most generic thing we can write is x comma y. The second step is to operate on this coordinate using the sequence given on the left, just like I did in my previous videos on transformations. So first we're going to dilate by a factor of 3 from the x-axis, which means we're multiplying the y value by 3, and so you would write that as x comma 3y. Reflecting in the y-axis means you take the x value and times by negative 1, giving us negative x comma 3y. Translating 8 units to the right means to take negative x and plus 8 while translating 2 units down means to take 3y and minus 2, and that results in negative x plus 8 comma 3y minus 2. So you'll notice in this case that we didn't just take the x and add 8, or take the y and minus 2, but we took the entire component, negative x or 3y, and operated on it. So with every operation, you want to make use of the last iteration that you found. So this coordinate is known as a transformed coordinate, which is a, an image coordinate. We can simplify it as x dash comma y dash, which are supposed to represent two different variables from x and y. They mean the same thing in terms of their positioning on the Cartesian axis, but you want to treat them as if they're two new variables, like a and b. The only reason they persist with using x and y with the apostrophes is simply because it's easy to tell which one is meant to be which variable at the end, when you write your answer. This will make a little more sense when we get to the end. Now since these two coordinate formats are comparable to each other, we can set up two equations for comparing each part of the coordinate. So x dash equals to negative x plus 8, and y dash equals to 3y minus 2. Rearrange them, making x and y the subject, such that x will equal to negative x dash plus 8, and y will equal to y dash over 3 plus 2 over 3. The reason we're doing this is because we don't have any information about the image, but we do have the pre-image equation, and that's in terms of x and y. So if we can swap those bits out using what we just found here, we will be able to rewrite our equation in terms of the x dash and y dash terms. So when you sub it all in and rearrange, you will end up with y dash equals 3 times negative x dash plus 8 squared minus 2. This is known as the image equation, but just so it looks like a proper equation, you are now allowed to remove the apostrophes. And that is our final answer. And sometimes, these sorts of questions can be done quite easily, even without doing all the algebra we just did, by simply reading between the lines with what the sequences mean, and updating the pre-image equation as needed. So we're going to have a look at an example where such a shortcut maneuver will not work, and you will need to do this sort of algebra. In our second question, we have y equals to 3 minus 2 times 5x plus 1 squared as our pre-image equation. And we want to find out what this looks like as an image once we transform it using the following sequence. The first step is the same. Write out x comma y as your generic starting coordinate. And as an important note, this will always be the same thing that you start with, no matter what your pre-image equation looks like. It's always just x comma y, nothing else. From here, we need to translate 3 units up, and so we take the y value and plus 3, followed by dilating a factor of half from the y-axis, so we would take the x value and times half, and then translate 2 units to the left. So we're going to take x on 2 and minus 2, since we want to change the entire x value and not just the x variable of the coordinate. And finally, reflect in the x-axis. So take the y plus 3 value and times that by negative 1. Don't just times the y by negative 1. And we have x on 2 minus 2 comma negative y minus 3. 
Once again, this is comparable to its generic image coordinate x dash comma y dash, so we can establish two equations where x dash equals to x on 2 minus 2 and y dash equals to negative y minus 3. We don't want x and y in our final equation, we want x dash and y dash, so make x and y the subjects, such that x will equal to 2x dash plus 4 and y equals to negative y dash minus 3. From here, substitute negative y dash minus 3 into y and 2x dash plus 4 into x. And as you're rearranging this equation to make y the subject, you can remove the dashes somewhere along the way. You don't have to do it at the very end, as long as you do it on the same line. And so we have y equals negative 6 plus 2 times 10x plus 21 to the power of 2. And this is our image equation. This is the final answer. Personally, I would not even dare to attempt finding this answer by just trying to read the sequences into the pre-image equation. I would probably get it wrong 9 out of 10 times. So I strongly recommend using the coordinate mapping I showed before, along with this substitution technique, to give you the best chance of getting the right answer every single time. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you found it helpful, please hit the like button and comment down below to let me know if this technique makes life easier for you guys or not. If you're not part of the channel yet, you can subscribe by clicking the subscribe button down below and ring the bell so that you get notified for when the next video comes out. Thanks so much for watching guys, have a good one, and I'll see you next time.